Hi, I am Zain Khan and in this video we are going to talk about homogeneous transformations. They are also called special Euclidean group or SE for short form. When dealing with 3D or spatial cases we call it SE3, for planar cases we call it SE2. Now I have drawn a fixed frame and a moving frame. So the moving frame is displaced by a vector D and rotated by an angle theta and there is a point which is expressed in the moving frame as a small x. The same point when represented in the fixed frame is the big x marked in red. In the previous videos, we derived this equation right here, which helps us to move from the small x to the big x. If I write it out more explicitly with the big x vector being big x and y, the small x vector being a point x and y and the d vector being dx and dy and if I replace these terms in the equation here and I expand it out I get this. Now I can write the same equation in, in another way. We will talk about why we are writing it in this way later on but first let me write it out as this. It is x, y and 1 is your first vector then there is a 3 by 3 matrix here with two zeros in the bottom row and a one and the rightmost vector is x, y and one. This three by three matrix is called the homogeneous transformation matrix and I, I can write the same equation in a more concise form in this manner. The big x and the small x are not just the x and y coordinates of a point but they are a three cross one vector with the first two elements being the x and y coordinates and the last element being a 1. If I have a look at the homogeneous transformation matrix, I notice that there is a rotation matrix tucked away in one corner and there is a displacement vector tucked away in another corner. So I can write homogeneous transformation matrix in this manner. All of this is always good to know but the takeaway of this is that you can write this equation in this manner. So big x equals h times small x where the homogeneous transformation matrix can be written in this manner which is a combination of the rotation matrix and the displacement vector. This equation that I have put a box around is the one that you should remember. The H is the homogeneous transformation matrix or it is also simply called a transformation matrix. Here is how you should start thinking about this homogeneous transformation matrix. You notice that there is a rotation matrix within it and there is a displacement vector. So this homogeneous transformation matrix is a matrix that takes the fixed frame and it displaces it by the vector d and then once it is displaced to its new location it rotates it about an angle theta in the counterclockwise direction. Now let us see how we can use homogeneous transformation matrices for successive transformations. So here is a fixed frame drawn and there is a displacement by a vector d1 which takes the fixed frame to the first moving frame m1 which is rotated by an angle of theta1 and then there is a displacement d2 which displaces the m1 to another location and then rotates it by theta2 and I call this final frame as my moving frame to m2. Here is the point expressed in M2 and here is the point expressed in the fixed frame. Now if I just write it out more explicitly the A1 would be a rotation matrix of theta1, the A2 is going to be a rotation matrix of theta2 and D1 and D2 are just U1, V1, U2, V2. Now in the previous videos we have drive this equation right here which is big X equals a1 a2 x plus a1 d2 plus d1 where the last two terms show the displacement and the a1 a2 term shows the rotation. If I were to write the same equation out in the homogeneous transform so I can say that the first homogeneous transform which is h1 takes the fixed frame and moves it to the m1 frame and the second homogeneous transform takes the m1 frame and moves it to the h2 frame. So I can just simply write all of this equation in a very concise form which is big X equals H1 H2 X and of course 
notice that this is just another way of writing this equation right here. If I want, I can write it in a more expanded form in this manner. And if I go ahead and multiply the first two matrices out, I get this form right here. Now, if I divide this matrix into four parts, I can see that the first part on the left gives me the rotation matrix. The part on the right gives me a translation vector. So just by observing it, I can notice that this, the rotation part is the same as E1, E2 and the translation part is the same as E1, D2 plus D1. If I go up and I compare it with the equation that we wrote above, I can see that this A1, A2 was indeed the part that gave us the rotation term and the next part A1, D2 plus D1 gave us the translation part. In this equation, we need to remember that the big X and the small X vectors have a one at the end and the homogeneous transform has a rotation matrix, a displacement vector and the bottom row is two zeros and a one. I can write the same equation in this manner as well, where the H1 is written in terms of the rotation matrix and the displacement vector and same for the H2. And if I multiply just in this form, I get this equation, which was the same thing we got a little while earlier. And of course, just remember that the big X and the smallest X vectors have a one at the end. I hope you liked this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up. If you have any queries or questions, leave them in the comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And as always, see you in the next video.